semua dah ada? Ada lagi? Semua ada nota eh? Nak, nak saya cakap bahasa Melayu ke nak cakap bahasa Inggeris? Mana-mana? Jangan bahasa Dayak Campur-campur Kenapa ya orang, orang Asia suka macam tu? Dia suka campur-campur I need to make sure the sequence is correct Okay, um, semua dah datang kan? <coughs> so, we, we're going to do this in um, sequential steps. Uh, we're going to start off with the... Oh, sorry. I'll use this, okay? Tak apa ke? Kuat bising. Then, I don't want to shout banyak sangat. Nanti lagi banyak yang ni nak kena telan. Okay, um, I was told that the group today, not everybody uh, have the background of plant science. So I think since you are dealing with um, crop production, regardless of your division, maybe you are microbiologist, maybe you are, I don't know, even economist, even, um, it's good to understand about the requirement of the organisms that you are dealing with okay because dealing with living organisms such as plants you want something out of it okay if that particular organism is not happy it's not doing well you're not going to get what you are after okay you might have been waiting for two three years hoping to get the best of the yield but the first three years, you neglected to give what it needs optimally. Nothing much will happen. You're going to get something, but not to the fullest capacity. So it's very important to understand about the plant's requirement. Okay? As human, you have requirements too. Because we too are living organisms. But since the kingdom is different, so the requirements also are more specific. Okay. Um, fish computer control. Me. I need the controller. Oh, the controller. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that. Samba, samba. Right. Um, when you look at the plants. You need to understand that there are parts that are visible to you, there are parts that are, are invisible. So these two parts need to be catered accordingly for your plan to function, function to be functional optimally. Meaning that you can neglect, for example, the soil component of it, but the moment this happens, it's going to be um, affecting the above ground part in a way that you didn't think that's going to happen but errors can accumulate over time okay i'm saying this because i've seen various issues with the plantation for example people kind of see oh there are some issues but they, they, they tend to have this neglecting characters you know oh it's all right it, that will resolve on its own <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't resolve, okay? And you, you are actually costing um, a lot of money to the plantation. So we don't want that to, to happen. So let's see um, the, the requirements of the plant. I should, should be finishing this um, under one hour next. <clears throat> actually, this slice is uh, for undergrad, but uh, well, knowledge is still knowledge, right? So there is a formula that, that I use to um, remind the student the mnemonic of memorization for the plant's requirement. We call it the um, allowing formula. Next. 
air, light, water, nutrient, and growing medium. So this thing, if you want to memorize it um, in the more easy way, next, it's an allowing uh, formula. Allowing what exactly? You perform all of this requirement for the plants in order to allow the plants to grow healthily, to develop normally, and hopefully to gain the most harvest out of it. So meaning that this is not only applicable to the oil palm, but any plants on the planet. Meaning that if you fulfill all these requirements, you can literally grow plants anywhere. You know NASA, the International Space Station, keep orbiting around the Earth? That station has a mini botanic garden in the station that's floating around the Earth at the moment. They use this concept to grow plants. Because the moment plants have all of this requirement fulfilled, they don't really care about the location. You can even grow the uh, plants in the cave, in other planets, right? So it's all about the basic fundamentals being fulfilled, right? Yeah, we go with the first component, air. So it's around us, you can't really see, but doesn't mean that nothing is present. So four things are important here, namely the oxygen, concentration, CO2, temperature, and humidity. On. Uh, the temperature surrounding the air. Um, look at this thing. Why, why do we have AC turn on? What will happen if, if, if I just, you know what, let's be green today. Don't turn it on, turn off. What happened? Warm? Well, your body is warm. Put a thermometer under your tongue. What, what does it read? What does it read? Thermometer under your tongue. You can put it now. Temperature. What does it read? The thermometer. Puppy? Puppy? Puppy seven. If your body is 37, why bring it down to 24? Make it 37 as well. So the elements of temperature in the air surrounding you is very important for, at least for us now, we have the AC turned on to ensure your mental stability. You want to be comfort, you don't want to be cranky in the morning, your boss forced you to undergo this course while you have better things to do. Right, so to drop you up, this thing is turned on. Comfort, happy, happy, happy. That happiness, I want to talk about that comfort and happiness. That is for what? For what purpose actually? Because this thing is, for, uh, is also important for the plants. That comfort and happiness in the um, decent cooling temperature is actually for the optimum biochemical reactions, right? That is the purpose because we are living things. Whatever in your body is the effects of continuous millions of simultaneous biochemical reactions. So in the plant, we got that as well. Oh, I need to use my rotan. All right. We talk about temperature. I this is kind of important for tropical because. The fact that oil palm belongs to the, what we call as the C3 plants. So plants in, throughout the world can be categorized according to the modes of photosynthesis. And one of the modes is called C3. The problem with C3, when it gets too hot, the plants actually not functioning very well. So that's why we need to worry about when the climatic conditions in our region start to become erratic, you know, unstable, sometimes it's drought, sometimes it's raining too much. That kind of makes the temperature unstable. So what will happen? Do you need 
high temperature or low temperature or what is it if the temperature is rather too low so you can see the graph here with the increasing of temperature the rate of growth and development will also rise so this is what we call as the sigmoid curve the logarithmic curve nothing much happening and suddenly it shoots very steeply going up and then eventually it will start to becoming plateau. let's say that this is around under 20 degree and this is between 25 to 33 degree and this is beyond 35 degree temperature the warmth that we actually feel around us is actually energy okay in the cells of living organisms there are many proteins enzymes metabolites lipid vitamins and so on so these things they need energy to capture various reactions at lower temperature nothing much can happen because there's not so much energy look at the polar bear if you go to tundra the north pole what's the temperature like easy minus 40. do you see the panda bear is running jumping happily what does the panda do pretty much hibernating right yeah as it gets warmer you can see that life start frolicking around rabbits running around kids screaming about non-stop that's the region here because that's just so much energy so think of that energy happening to the each individual cells in the plant so the cells now have all this energy to capture all various um, reactions but what happens when it gets too hot <coughs> try 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 50 degree what will happen to 50 degree in fact, that's why 50 degree lah. We try 40 degree. If it's outside 40 degree, what are you doing? Running, frolicking out and about? You're pretty much like a panda now. And start to turn on this even, even colder. Okay? So there is an optimum temperature for all of the living organisms. Okay? So this is on the graph. And this is the actual thing. You can see that you get bigger and bigger and happier if you get any hotter that's going to have an impact you can actually see that visibly All right so this is very important for photosynthesis the reason why you are having this machine if it gets too hot nothing much going to happen All right okay next All right humidity um gas surrounding us can also be water right so water in the gaseous form the water vapor have the um, specific content at any time of the day you can see you can imagine that we are actually living in a bubble right and depending on your location the temperature or time of the day the bubble where you are now will have specific capacity to hold water right it's illustrated here <clears throat> this yellow circle is actually the maximum capacity that environment can hold water vapor right <clears throat> how can it gets bigger depending on the altitude depending on the um, uh, the time of the day the capacity of the air to hold water can change significantly why one reason is because the temperature reasoning if you go up what happened to the temperature if you go higher let's say you go to mount kinabalu is it hotter or colder when it 
the, the fact that it gets colder, meaning that the individual air molecules are not active, okay? They are easily being compressed down and not going anywhere. So when, when, when that is the case, it's very easy to saturate air at Kinabalu, Mount Kinabalu, than to saturate air at sea level. So that's, that's, that's the reason. So this is translated in the form of relative humidity. See the word relative here. Relative means, means that it compares with the maximum capacity of a location to contain water versus what is actually present in the air. For example, in the room here, let's say that the capacity is 1,000 liter. It can hold 1,000 liter of air. When you have a like hygrometer, you measure, oh, actually there's only um, 500, 500 liters of water. It can withhold 1,000. You measure, there's only 500. That means the humidity now is only 50%. That's what it means by RH. This 1,000 uh, liter change the location, bring this room, bring to the top of Everest. The capacity to hold water, uh, air molecule is not going to be the same. It's going to be compressed to maybe around uh, 700 liters only. It's the same. The size exactly the same. The people, your neighbors bring all to Everest. But because you have changed the altitude, it gets brought down now, the, the capacity to hold water. So it's very easy to saturate the water at the top of the Everest, okay? That's why you see, you see sometimes people make a fact. Um, if you go to Everest, you don't have to wait so long to boil water, right? You, because water boils in, at the top of Everest around 70 degrees, I think. Yeah, because the situation now is different. Okay, the, the, uh, the occupying molecules for the given same area, it works differently at higher altitude. So why this is important for the plant? You see all this? This is the temperature, and the temperature is affected by your altitude or your, whether you are tropical or four season um, uh, countries. The relative humidity cannot be too low or too much depending on the plant species. Why? If it's too low, your plants are going to undergo stress. Whereas, for example, you have um, oil palm seedlings. When these oil palm seedlings are not experiencing optimum relative humidity, pretty much it's going to struggle to pull the water from the soil all the way up to, to, to the leaf. So it's, it's, it's pretty much going to stunt it. Okay. At the deeper level, low humidity close to mata. So mata, microscopic spore, uh, pores on the leaf surface, very sensitive to uh, humidity. Stomata are the only gates that allow gas exchange. If stomata are closed, how photosynthesis are going to happen? Okay? Try put your finger into your nose. Don't open your mouth. Maybe you can last for one minute. Try one hour. Right, okay. How about if it's too much? If it's too much, the dangers of too much humidity. You are start to invite lots of unwelcome um, participants. For example, fungus, okay? And this is something that easily happened in tropical nursery because um, and you keep on spraying your plant with, with, with water. So actually, it's not a very good idea to have the misting turn on at the wrong time of the day. Okay? Uh, 
Alright. Next. Alright. <coughs> and also oxygen. Okay, we all know this, right? Why? Why do you need oxygen? I like to ask this question. Even you know at the PhD level, you know, the survivor, I like to ask this question. Why what why do you need oxygen? For what exactly? For what? You know plants need um, carbon dioxide as an ingredient for photosynthesis. Why? But why does it need oxygen? For what? For respiration. Respiration for respiration. So what is respiration? Imagine I'm um, like standard five kid. How do you explain respiration to me? What? If you say breathing, itu pertanda tanda pentingan fisiologi. Baru nak conteng. I was happier earlier because I I, I can do something. Ini boleh jadi tengok. Kau banyak apa? Ada cawan ni ada. What's what's respiration? Easy, easy. One sentence, two, three words. How do you, how do you, how, how do you explain it? What, what is it actually? I, I, I have been asking this quite some time. Apparently, 80% of the students are so, but respiration is actually breathing. Respiration is actually breathing. Uh -uh. No, that's not what it is. Simply put, respiration is breaking down of 